Now for the weirdest part of the details of the coding of this computer, the way in which instructions are coded in memory. This is the latest in a series of experiments by Chuck in compacting multiple instructions into single memory operations. The goal is to minimize the amount of time spent fetching instructions out of memory so that time can be spent more productively executing them. Here is an 18-bit word, and in the F18A computer it is subdivided into four slots that we number 0 through 3. And that nomenclature will persist throughout our documentation. Through, you'll find slot numbers mentioned in shadow blocks of source code. So it's a good idea to get your head straight on which slots are assigned what numbers. So they're numbered left to right, 0 through 3. The first three slots in an 18-bit instruction word are each five bits long, which allows each of them to have one of the 32 defined opcodes written in it. The last slot over here is only three bits long, and is followed by two implied zeros, so that these three bits are effectively the higher order three bits of the actual opcode involved. That means that only eight of the opcodes, 8 of the 32, can appear in slot 3. No op is one of them, return semicolon is one of them, uh, fetch p and store p are two of them, and there are reasons in general why those were selected consciously to be part of an instruction that, that had them as the third slot, as the fourth slot. Uh, in particular, Micronext was planned to be one of the things that could be placed in the last slot. Unless one of these slots is an opcode which causes branching to occur, they are simply executed left to right in sequence at a cost typically of about 1.4 nanoseconds each. While they're being executed, the computer is considering the ability to prefetch the next word. If none of these is a jump or a call or a return, of any sort, <clears throat> or if none of them to the right of where we're interpreting right at the moment is a call or a return of any sort, then we, the computer, know that we cannot have a branch or a transfer of control anywhere between here and the end of the instruction. And so we know we're going to execute the next word eventually. We're not going to go somewhere else and execute something else. That's one quantum of knowledge. The second question is whether anywhere between here and there we're going to be doing any other memory operations like fetches or stores or store Bs or fetch pluses. If any of those things are between us and the end of the instruction, we cannot consider prefetching either. But indeed, if in slot zero we find something like plus and all the rest of the slots are garden variety register and ALU operations, then we can actually start doing the memory operation to read the next word if we feel like it. Exactly what the rules are for that are defined by each one of our computers as a separate issue of decoding and timing. And so we don't document them in, in a great detailed way. But what we do give you in the data book for the chip, for the G144, are reports on how the G144 does it well enough that you can predict um, what the timing of the fetching of the next instruction in sequence will be based upon which slot is the last one that has anything in it that is going to do a memory read or write of any sort or jump. Uh, look to the data book for that type of information. To clarify one point, the prefetch rules do not vary from F18 to F18 processor. The rules apply to the entire F18A implementation on a particular class of chips. So the rules which are documented in the data book do apply to every computer that you'll be programming on these products. Otherwise, normal operation is execute them left to right one at a time, fast as possible. Uh, next we will talk about the other types of instructions that are encoded that are not garden variety, ALU, and register ops.